This morning is both brilliant and hilariously overrunning. <laughs> is that my fault? It's not at all your fault. Oh. I blame Renatas. <laughs> but um, I don't think that we gather every two years from all four corners of the UK for me to rush everybody so that you can have a slightly longer lunch. So I've taken an executive decision that you're going to have a shorter lunch and less coffee and more interesting stuff from Peter. So let's get straight to questions. Unless, of course, you're too bored and haven't got any questions. I didn't think that would be the case. Yeah. Tell us who you are and where you're from, as Silly used to say. It's um, Rob Williamson from the Community Foundation for Tyne and Northumberland. Peter, thanks very much for that and for name-checking us. Um, we're incredibly passionate about the arts at the Tyne and Wear Community Tyne and Wear Northumberland Community Foundation, as you know. Um, but one of the things that interests me about match schemes, particularly, and we deal with a match scheme in Community Foundations, Community First, in, in uh, parts of the UK, um, which is, has different criteria to Catalyst. But one of the things that um, interests me philosophically, perhaps more than practically, about match schemes is, um, shouldn't match for giving be about new giving? rather than shifting, giving charitable money that's already at play around. You talked about Barbara and the Sage Gate said that money is from the Barber Foundation, so that money was already charitably at play. How do we, how do we use match schemes to get new money rather yeah. than shifting money around between the causes? Yeah, well, I'd say both, actually. I mean, I think it's a good principle for it to unlock new money, and it certainly has unlocked new money for the arts because there are trusts and foundations matching on the catalyst scheme who never have given to the arts before. So it is unlocking new money. But I'd say both because I think, um, I think uh, I'll give you one particular example of uh, an arts organization where they had a legacy which had to be used in a particular way, in a matching way. And if, if, if catalyst hadn't happened, it wouldn't have unlocked the legacy. And I'll also give you another more general principle, which is that I think quite a lot of arts organizations, and forgive me, but that's what I'm here to talk about, that I think the principle may apply across the board to charities, have got donors who might turn up on the doorstep or who've been cultivated for many years who say, I want to give you 10 pounds, 100,000 pounds, whatever it is. And they say, thank you, we'll take that 100,000 pounds. But how much more powerful that existing donor if they said, well, we're going to take the 100,000 pounds but we'd like you to donate £50,000 now and make the other conditional on us raising another £50,000. And then you go to other people and say, do you know, if you give a pound, it's two pounds because we have a matching. So I think some of the existing money that's being given to the arts could be much more dynamic if we had the wit to use it in more matching schemes than we currently do. So I do think it's a combination. That's interesting. So one of the things we've been talking about here is the role of community foundations actually as advisors to people on their philanthropy, not just recipients of cheques and that that's happening a lot already, but actually taking that rather proactive approach with a donor and saying, okay, how about if we did it this way? Exactly, and you know, the people in this hall represent an amazing pool of expertise from whom the rest of us can learn. Hmm. And the ideas that you have uh, and the strategies that you have experimented on and you're demonstrating that I heard more about this morning, first thing, but I'm sure you've had them over the last two days, uh, that we have a lot to learn from that. Um, over there on the left, Pass the mic. <coughs> Whilst um, Peter's answering this question, if you want to ask the next one, try and catch my eye. If I'm looking around, that's what I'm doing. Tell us who you are again. Uh, Kevin Richman from Sussex Community Foundation. Um, thank you very much, Peter, for highlighting the importance of the work of community foundations in, in supporting the arts. And particularly, as you highlighted really well, you know, we're supporting loads of grassroots organisations, whether they'd see themselves as arts organisations or as community groups that are helping people. We, we make a massive contribution to the arts. One of the things we've been talking about all, all week, and we always do, is uh, why has no one heard of community foundations? But, um, Sorry, could you say that again? Why has no one heard of community foundations? Okay, we make a massive contribution to society, but we're not well known. Now, the Arts Council, I think, is quite well known. <laughs> Most people, I think, have heard of the Arts Council. Um, given your recognition of our vital contribution to community arts, what can the Arts Council do to help raise the profile of community foundations as a vehicle for giving locally? Yeah, well, well um, by standing on a stage and making the speech I've just made, but not preaching to convert it, but to others. So, yes, uh, you're, I absolutely take your point, and it's a very good point. Uh, it's got to be mutual, by the way. 
if I go and market you elsewhere, which I'd love to do, you've got to market me, okay? Is that a deal? <laughs> he's nodding. I think he's nodding. Um, but no, uh, that's absolutely right. I suspect, though, there are some quite profound strategic uh, issues that you've been discussing about when you want to promote the idea of community foundations by name or when you want to promote specific charities that you're raising money for. And I suspect you have a number of strategies in what circumstances you do that because it isn't an end in itself, is it? Uh, so I suspect I'm blundering there into something I don't know a lot about and I suspect you've had discussions about that. But the general cause, yes, and as I hope you heard from what I said earlier, in going forward as we develop arts, art strategies for fundraising in the arts, and, and as we work more with great partners like yourselves, we are going to be um, promoting the benefits of working with the likes of, uh, of, of community foundations, uh, as, as I indicated, for instance, in a new conference next year. So yes, but it's mutual. It's a deal. He's nodding. <laughs> You're going to get that signed in writing up. later. On the right here. Hi, I'm Judy from the Suffolk Community Foundation. Um, in, in Suffolk, we need no persuading about the benefit of the arts. We've got the fantastic example of Alba Music, which has had huge support from the Arts Council. And we've seen what a tremendous ripple-on effect that's had in terms of employment and the cultural um, vibrancy of the whole of East Suffolk. Um, and what I'm always conscious of is those communities where you haven't got a fantastic Alba Music example. And I wondered what role the Arts Council played in going into the communities where the arts mm. aren't thriving, and, yeah. and rather than supporting what is there, where there are the gaps. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, just, just hold, hold them. The, the gentleman sitting in front of you, luckily, is also, I'm, I'm, I'll say a couple of words, but he's my colleague from the Arts Council, Phil Gibby, and I want him to add to this. Um, we have a specific program which is lottery funded, not tax funded, called um, Creative People and Places, which is specifically targeted at l areas of low arts take up, okay? And just to give you a sense of how that works, I'm going to ask Phil to say a word or two, perhaps, about how that works around in, in the Southwest, Phil. Yeah, these are, these are early days for Christmas. Phil, you're such a beautiful man, you have to stand up. And then everyone will get the benefit of your beautiful visage. I'm a hatchet-faced bureaucrat, nothing scary. <laughs> um, <laughs> we we recognise our key mission is great art for everyone. And um, there, there's a really interesting challenge, isn't there, around how we distribute cultural capital. Do we put it all in big city centre locations and expect people to come to it? Or do we take work far more widely and equitably across the country. That's what Creative People and Places is all about. We're working in the southwest um, in places such as Torbay and Plymouth and other areas where, where engagement with the arts is low, where you often see issues around uh, multiple indices of deprivation or levels of aspiration and so forth. And critically for us, it's about partnerships and stakeholder buy-in. So it, we need to align our agendas with whether it is local authorities, further and higher education, um, business sector, local enterprise partnerships and so forth. Um, from my point of view, community foundations are a very, very natural partner in that conversation. And uh, if anybody is interested in picking those conversations up with us, we'd be only too happy to talk. Thank you. I'm beginning to think Phil should have made the speech earlier, actually. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Just here on the front. Can I add to that? Uh, my name is Mike Bull, and I chair the Devon Community Foundation. And I came to the Devon Community Foundation having previously chaired the arts rural touring scheme in Devon called Villages in Action. Now, you've been talking about cities. Obviously, you know about Villages in Action, and you know about the, uh, the rural touring schemes throughout the country. But so often, rurality and the deprivation in rural areas is missed. Yes. And yet, actually, things like events in village halls make a massive contribution to so much of the same objectives that we in community foundations are involved with. It is complementary. You've obviously yeah. made those points. Can I um, take the opportunity to encourage you uh, to continue to invest in the rural areas yeah. of the country so sadly neglected and so often? Uh, people don't get the experience of the arts. They don't get the experience of social interaction in their communities because of lack of transport or, or whatever. And it makes a massive difference to people in loneliness in rural areas. Uh, and that is what we, all of us, spend quite a lot of time doing. Yes. So I, I applaud the fact that you do it. And I urge you to continue to do it because it is one of those few ways in which your uh, benevolence and generosity can transform lives in very isolated mm. rural communities. Yeah, thank you. Uh, very eloquent. <laughs> and 
And can I say it's, in a sense, your benevolence and generosity as well, because the, the money that goes into it either comes from the taxpayer or comes from people who buy lottery tickets. So it's all of us who are contributing and then focusing it. And uh, long may it continue. I'll Thank take you. a la last question from Graham from Norfolk. I just had this, we talk about formalizing our relationship and w making it mutually beneficial. Is there any opportunity for you to challenge the Community Foundation Network if you were to give us some money that we match fund it and derive it into our arts, into our rural communities and other places? It's well, your second deal of the morning, Peter. Uh, yes, yes. I used to, uh, I used to um, produce a TV show called Deal or No Deal. <laughs> Lock the doors. And, <laughs> and if you'll allow me, Noel, <laughs> I'd say on this occasion, possibly. Um, <laughs> because, uh, look, uh, I think there's a lot more we can do together in the future. And there's no doubt that uh, money that comes from the Arts Council under its various headings is often uh, shared with partner organizations, managed by others, the people who are delivering the training for, for skills, you know, are, are the custodians of Arts Council money. So um, it's quite possible. I was very taken, in fact, it was you, wasn't it, who was saying some of the money, you've got a half a million, and then next week you've got another million. Uh, just like that. I think this network... Well, you hold the mic up. Sorry, I think this network here knows the people in the local communities that actually do enjoy, do enjoy the arts and actually know the groups that are doing a difference. And I think yep. your million pounds or whatever you choose to give us, I think we could, um, <laughs> we could probably double it. Fine. Should, should I, we start I'm with a million? And then um, I'm hoping to, I'm try hoping, as a pilot in Norfolk. I'm hoping to get out of here with my suit still on my back. <laughs> <laughs> One more, go on then, from the person I hardly recognise from the photograph that was earlier, <laughs> earlier broadcast. I think it's the Matthew Bocock. Well, after more such a generous brother. introduction, I'm not sure I need to introduce myself. Peter, thank you very much for coming. Obviously, as many of you know, I've spent seven or eight years involved with the Community Foundation organisations and I'm passionate as ever about the opportunity for uh, engaging people with their local community. I think there's enormous opportunity to align these two agendas. One of the things that always alarms me at times is that these uh, silos exist and people start thinking about developing philanthropy and it's almost like it's a revelation to discover that actually 20-something percent of all the grants are actually arts related. So I think there's huge opportunity without looking at it in sort of tactical, please we want money terms, there's huge opportunity to align. For example, how many of the foundations right now, and I'm interested, stick your hands up, actually run an arts fund? Which is quite a number already. Not bad. Now, you're always going to find that there are donors who want to give lots of grants to small organizations rather than one big grant to another large organization. Ideal role for community foundations. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to be able to align our two agendas and hopefully by bringing my knowledge of the way the Community Foundation movement works, understand what your motivations are, and we can try and align that a little bit with the Arts Council's direction as well. Thanks. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Peter, thank you very much. It sounds like this is very much to be continued, and um, Matthew's just volunteered. I think you just heard Matthew Pocock there volunteering to take this work forward um, and probably use Norfolk as a pilot area. <laughs> um, so thank you for that. We look forward to hearing your report in two years' time.